Welcome to Physique, the free energy special interest group where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, this is Crystal. Uh, Crystal Go. I'm the founder of Physique. Um, press, I see you. I don't see me on the screen. Uh, anyway, um, uh, this is our hundredth meeting, and it's it's so wonderful to have everyone here with us. And thank you for choosing to be with us. We have fantastic, amazing speakers lined up for physics meetings. And needless to say, I've got to start right away. Pontus, could you help me share screen the PowerPoint presentation? Oh yes. Yes. Just a moment. <laughs> right. And meanwhile, um, this is our 100th meeting, and indeed, our 100th meeting deserves to have very good speakers. We have our first speaker, Dr. Valerie Mikhailovich Yuvarov, with us uh, as the first speaker. And then we have our second speaker, Patty Brassard, Mick Mac Elder, a Mayan, 99%. Uh, I will be introducing them later in my PowerPoint presentation. If Pontus could share screen, please. Our 100th meeting today is on the 4th of May. And it's, um, I suppose, is a month, May 2022, where we're expecting a lot of new things coming up and we're going to have brand new systems in our lives so hopefully all this will take beautifully <laughs> and uh, transition smoothly uh well i'm just rattling on while pontus sharing screen yes so you see my powerpoint presentation here on the screen the free energy special interest group next slide please pontus welcome indeed uh, this is a platform where science meets spirituality <laughs> We have the next slide, please, Just Keep clicking yeah. fast. Yeah. Um. Uh, I basically just wanted to have the uh, agenda up on the screen. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should try to share screen myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just not coming on. The reason why I have the team helping me is because I have very low bandwidth, so I can't share screen and it's not coming on. Uh, Pontus is having some problems as well. Yeah, I do. Uh, What happened now? You can't share screen. Just a minute. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just click on that. Yeah, one by one instead of yeah full screen. This is fine, Pontus. No need to go full screen. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, welcome everyone to the Free Energy Special Interest Group, our 100th meeting on the 4th of May. All right, next slide, please. I think it's too slow. We do the small screens fine. 
Yeah, uh, Physic, the Free Energy Special Interest Group offers a platform for free energy technologies to present their work and teachings with creative, innovative, varying ideas and theories, experimentations with different beneficial results. We are an open-minded futurist freedom seekers group, and we are open to all teachings, welcoming everyone who, uh, from science and uh, spirit to Forge through the furthest frontiers, sharing your knowledge with us so all of us can learn together and move forward. Thank you, Pontus. Next slide, please. So I have Pontus here with me, who's the head of R&D, and uh, Dr. Fres Fresel, who is our, our teacher uh, for the R&D teams. And then uh, James Rink is absent because he's doing a conference in Nashville, the Secret Space Program Conference. So we have the first session speaker, Dr. Valerie Mikhailovich Yuvarov, the head of UFO Association of the Unity of Supreme Officers of Russia. He has devoted more than 15 years to ufology, as well as to the study of the legacy of ancient civilizations. Author of numerous publications, he will talk about Earth, Ancients, Pyramid Technology, Once of Horrors for Healing, Technology of the Gods, and uh, the Answer to Cosmic Virus and Bacterial Threats, and more. I'm sure he has more up his sleeves to share with us with the well, short time that we have given him today, but he's got one hour. I'm sure Patty Brassat wouldn't mind um, giving some time to him. So um, we actually could call uh, Dr. Valerie back in, in, the, in the future meetings as well to present more of his, uh, he's got so much to share. The second session is Betty Brassard, Gaia Shaman, Mick Mac, Elder. Um, he, she will be talking about Gaia's ascension troth, the speeding up the timeline of the loss of Gaia's ascension troth to the finishing line and more. Very important information to heed and discern for yourself. And then pen down the 101 physic meeting on the 1st of June. Right. Thanks, Pontus. Next slide, please. So don't forget the next meeting is on the 1st of June. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it. So the, I, this is brought to you by me, Crystal Gaunt, and the physics team. We have quite a team here with us, the R&D team members, and uh, Adrian from the Philippines, uh, Tricia, I don't know where you are now, Tricia, but there you go, Scott and uh, John and everyone and Mike and Marisi as well. So uh, please, I ask you to join us at our Telegram group because that's where the action is. Because, you know, Facebook kept blocking us and the messages never get through. Um, and then we are with ODC, we have a bit shoot as well. Most of the important intel YouTube, I mean, um, videos that we made, the recordings from our meeting, we had to chuck it into the uh, BitChute channel, I'm afraid, because YouTube gave us strikes all the time. One time, the whole channel was removed completely, and it was really hard to keep up with the uh, censorship. Right, so thank you. Thank you, Pontus, for helping me share screen. I would like to now, yeah, you can write to me. I mean, you can free screen and see the uh, uh, details of how you can join us, right? So now I want to introduce Dr. Valerie Mikhailovich Yuvarov. He's, who, he's the head of the Department of UFO Research, uh, Paleo Sciences and uh, Paleo Technology of the National Security Academy of Russia and has devoted more than 15 years to ufology as well as to the study of the legacy of ancient civilizations. He is a member of uh, Russia's Russian Ge Geographic Society and head of UFO Association of the Unity of Supreme Officers of Russia. Valerie is very well known in the West, having 
been asked to speak at the number of American UFO conferences as well as all over the world. He is the author of numerous papers on uh, paleo technology and uh, paleo science, as well as ufology and esoterica, published in the Russian and uh, foreign press. And he has built like, wow, he says, well, 60 pyramids or so all over in Russia. And most of them are private. Oh, we can't wait for you to tell us more. He has initiated and participated in a number of expeditions to India and Egypt in search of material evidence of ancient knowledge. He's a regular speaker at international ufology conferences, of course. We'll be all ears listening to you, Dr. Valerie Yubarov, talk about Earth Ancients, Pyramid Technology, Once of Horrors, Technology of the Gods, the answer to cosmic virus and bacteria threats, which is very important for people to know today. So over to you. Uh, can you pick up the microphone and do your start your presentation, Dr. Valerie Yubarov? Okay, you. thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, Perfect. now I'm going to share my screen with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could see what I'm going to show you. So actually, I'm engaged in investigation, not 15, already 33 years. And um, I started professional ufology on the governmental level. And it gave me a lot of possibilities and a lot of knowledge, which actually later led my way to what I'm doing now. So um, uh, in one of contact with extraterrestrials, it happened in my life once, I had uh, asked a person who was just standing before me, what are your interests here on the planet Earth? And I remember that person told me, if you want to understand our interests, you need to learn the prehistory of your civilization. And then you will understand our interests. So, and that was the critical moment, just turning moment in my life. And I started to learn ancient Egypt, China, Mayan civilization. Actually, as I told you, I spent 33 years investigating ancient technologies. And here on this picture, for example, the next one, you can see so-called the ones of Horus. Actually, I was amazed by the fact that if you take a look on the statues, in museums, for example, of ancient Egypt, priests and pharaohs, then you will see that they were promoting this instrument for the whole history of their civilization. It means more than 5,000 years. And it was understandable for me that if they did it for so long time, probably <coughs> it, it has yes. some very special meaning so, and I didn't think that starting from the ones of Horus investigation, I will come up very close to understanding of such evolutionary topics, very important topics like consciously controlled reincarnation. Also another very important topic, and I think you, you share, you understand me that I'm talking about direct communication with the God. So just investigating the ones of Horus and the pyramid effect, uh, which I did for more than 33 years, I came to understanding that these instruments, they will give humanity a chance to make a very important step in our development. But important is that we need to know the mechanism of influence of the pyramid on the human organism and energy structure. 
this, top, this topic is something very, very special. All the topics actually are more than interesting. I'm talking about pyramids and their effects on the human body. I'm talking about the ones of Horus and the other objects which you can see in the hands of the pharaohs and the priests. And for sure, one hour presentation is a very short time to share knowledge. That's why for those who is interested, I'm giving contacts. It's WhatsApp and Telegram and for, for online seminars, then you can contact me and we can arrange maybe with the help of Crystal, one or another webinars where I'll give you a very comprehensive, a very detailed information on ancient technologies. But today I'm gonna share with you one of the projects which I'm developing for many, many years. You know that uh, I'm building the pyramids in Russia. Actually, I have built already more than 30 big scale pyramids. So, and that was done by reason. Working with ancient texts, especially with Egyptian text here on the screen on the right top corner, you can see so-called Dendera Zodiac. And this Dendera Zodiac contain information about at least three asteroid impacts, which took place within the last 20,000 years. And this impact have been so strong that, for example, 13,675 years ago, our planet lost its orbit and flew away from the sun. If you remember that our previous length of the year was 360 days, now we have 365. It's just because planet flew away five days further of the flight from the sun. That's why our climate have been changed. Important is that working with this ancient calendar, actually the Ndara Zodiac is a catastrophic calendar. We came to understanding and conclusion that we are in store for next asteroid impact which is going to happen approximately in five, six generation. It's approximately 130, 150 years. So we have got a very short time before this event. And also invest investigating activity of so-called uh, installation, which is shutting down meteorites and asteroids over our planet for last 20,000 years. Actually, this is a real technical device situated in Russian Siberia. And we have been investigating this very interesting device. Let's say it's a huge underground system. And we understood that this instrument could be used to save our planet against this future asteroid impact. So, but investigating the technical aspects of this installation, we came to another very important conclusion that nobody with, will allow us to use this technology on our present level of morality and ethics. This is the reason why in Russia, we have decided using all that results of investigation of the pyramids of ancient Egyptian texts to create 
a complex of pyramids which will help us to bring up a new generation of kids with new mentality, with different energetic capacities. I'm talking the ones with whom extraterrestrial world will be communicating on continuous basis. So for this reason, I have investigated with my friends a lot of conical texts of ancient Egypt containing very useful information about the pyramids, about the principles which should be embodied in the pyramids, about golden section. <clears throat> this is the very special metric system which should be used uh, when we are building our houses, pyramids, temples, so that all this construction would be tuned on the human body, on the human energetical structure. So in, in the progress of investigation, we have encountered facts which turned upside down our understanding of the world and humanity. And um, I mean, we learned, <clears throat> sorry, a lot of the properties of the human body opening up before humanity, uh, a possibility using the pyramids to develop our kids, to develop ourselves and get ready for the future events. So here on this picture, I just try to explain that there is a close connection between human body, planet Earth, pyramid, and actually universe. We have learned about close connection between man, Earth, and universe how man is integrated into the energy structure of cosmos. And when this information has been structured and understood, we have decided to start building a huge pyramid complex in the Tomsk city. It's the middle of Russia. So for this, we made a choice of a very special place here on this picture you can see the zone of interaction of three geological faults so we did everything according to ancient knowledge we we found the power place and it is very close to the road so that any stuff could be brought to the construction location and we could bring our project into life pretty fast. This project will contain 29 pyramids. And each pyramid, actually all of the pyramids in the complex are very, very special. So all that knowledge which I have gained, I have gathered within the 33 years of investigation of the pyramids all over the world, I brought into the construction of the pyramids for this complex. So you can see that this is the central pyramid with a very unusual internal structure. It has 25 so-called chamber resonators, which on one hand empowering the pyramid, the energy of the pyramid. On the other hand, it gives to a pyramid, very special properties. As I told you before, proper pyramid should be built using a very special mathematics and very special materials. One of the most important material is the white quartz. And here you can see that when we started to build a pyramid on the ground, we started to use this white quartz sand because white quartz sand has a very special capacity. It, it, it has a property of very tiny energetical source. That's why 
all the elements of the future pyramids, we started to build using the white quartz. Here, you can see the 12th found foundation. 12 facet foundation is a very important to as, as the tool, as the resonators, which, which can cut off a negative component of the energy coming from the fault, from the earth. Here, I'd like to point out that energy of the earth has kind of a negative component. And we should always remember about it. This 12 facet resonator will help to cut off negative component of the earth, of the earth energy flow coming from the core. And then in the future, the energy of the pyramid on the all levels will be always, always positive. Here on the picture, you can see that our workers have been polishing the side of this 12 facet foundation with very high precision, because if we want to get a proper deep result, pyramid must be built precisely according to the parameters which have been chosen for this particular pyramid. So here you can see a huge quartz crystal. This one we have been using for energetical source of the pyramid, which will be, which actually now already situated under the, under the pyramid. And here is a very interesting and important picture. So on one hand, there is a, you can see here one of the stage of the construction process of the 12 facet foundation. But look here, you see, this is energetical object. Actually, it means that somebody from that moment already, you see it here, somebody started to watch us, to watch our construction process. Just briefly, we are coming through the stages of construction process so that you could see what this 12 foundation has inside. And on the other hand, so that we could have enough time to give you the most important information. Now, this is the process when we have been covering the top of the 12 facet foundation. And this is concrete, which contain white quartz. Actually, this is only white quartz, nothing else. So, and here on this picture, you can see a ventilation system so that in the future, when the pyramid will be built, it could be ventilated naturally without any special specially made electronic systems. And here on this picture, you can see that how this pyramid is looking inside. You see that here in the middle, we have kind of an open channel so that the energy which is coming from the earth through the pyramid has no any interruptions. This energetical beam must be as pure as possible. Also, you can see that this pyramid has four level system of resonator chambers, two level system of water reservoirs, they are here. Water is important because water contain information. 50 tones of water contain all information about any living creature whichever appeared and lived on the planet Earth from the beginning of the planet Earth up till today. So, and this is the reason why water must be there 
if you if we plan if we want to use the pyramid as the tool for interplanetary space communication and also as the tool to get information from akasha chronic from uh, informational field of the earth here you can see a ne next stage when we started to build internal structure of the pyramid this is the central big big uh, chamber with also there will also will be some interesting elements which you will see on the following pictures here you can see the pyramid shaped chamber resonators of the first level inside of each is a resonator there is an energetical source it's a very special device and we have a lot of such devices in the pyramid to empower each process this is the place where this energetical source actually is installed today this is the channels corridors between chamber resonators so people also can go there and to spend their time we also bring there some liquid some medical stuff for special experiments so here you can see the following step when we started to to create the surface of the pyramid for this reason we used a special coverage so that the uh, the sides of the pyramid would be as good as possible this is the following step so near here we have finished the first level of the pyramid and when concrete was ready we started to build a second level of resonator chambers and here you can see the pyramid is already over on this picture you can see how we are polishing the sides of the pyramid and here it's almost ready almost ready when it was uh, polished inside of the pyramid we also have noticed and filmed these interesting energetical objects which later have appeared inside of the pyramid pretty often this is a general view of the pyramid and it is also important to point out that um, on top of the pyramid must be so called a capstone made of quartz we have brought the big crystal from brasilia and we have cut off this capstone and put it on top of the pyramid because this device let's call it this capstone must be on top of the pyramid otherwise will pyramid will not be working as 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 we are waiting also inside of the pyramid we have installed big quartz ball this is another energetical source uh, this is the biggest quartz ball in the world i'm talking about natural quartz not artificial natural it's 42 centimeters in diameter and 108 kilograms in weight i think you already see that these numbers like 108 and 42 it's not just something it's it's very special uh, numbers inside of the pyramid on the first floor there is this kind of a energetical source with a, a crystal ball in the middle and also in the corner you can see the bronze bell it is a very important tool to to switch on the pyramid on one hand and also to correct biological rhythms of the human body of each cell with this bell 
long, long ago, even Nazis, I tell, I, I tell you, they spend a lot of time investigating the effects of the bronze bell on the human cell. And they noticed that bronze bell is killing uh, bacteria in the body just from one, like one shot. That's why we have decided to create a special brain, bronze bell with a special tone and installed it in the pyramid. So here you can see the general view of the pyramid with a capstone on top. Also, we have decided to, let's say to repeat the same principle which have been used in, in Atlantis when they were building their complex of the pyramid. I'm talking about so-called water channels, which you can see on this picture. This is the reconstruction of that place where the Atlantean pyramid have been standing, have been built. Now this uh, island is under the water. And here on this picture, you can see the system of the 29 pyramids. And the idea was to build this pyramid so that if you take like a laser beam touching the top, the peak of each pyramid, then you will see that we, by this way, we are creating so-called energetical pyramid, a very big energetical pyramid. This is very important from the principle of yin yang or Baka, as it was told in ancient Egypt. Baka principle is giving a strict idea that if you are building a complex of the pyramid or if you are building a pyramid, you should build the physical one and also you must create an energetical one. So here on this picture, you can see how we were constructing the pyramid in line. And here I put yellow lines touching the capstones of each pyramid. And you can see what I meant when I was talking about so-called energetical pyramid. Actually, this principle have been used in, by ancient civilization. For example, Cambodia, Angkor Wat, you remember this temple. So if you just put a laser beam through the tops of each uh, element, then you will see that this is the pyramid actually. The same with the Christian pyramids in Russia. So, and we have decided to create special energetical system. For this reason, we have built these octahedrons, four octahedrons. Inside of each of them, there is an en so-called energetical source. It's a very special system, idea of which I have found in ancient Egyptian texts. So, and we have decided to use it, create it, and now it's installed inside. This is the system. This is the system how to, this is two columns which were constructed to, for, for one reason, to put this uh, octahedron on, on it so that we could then later direct we can tune the system by a very special way to create uh, energetical beam touching exactly the capstones of each pyramid. So here on this picture, you can see how we fixed uh, with the help of white quartz, these uh, octahedrons in the corner of the, com it, in four corners of the complex so that nobody could move it anymore. And here you can see the beam, which I just put on picture so that you could see what was the idea. Actually, 
more information about it, you can find on this web page. So, and here, when we built this energetical pyramid, these four special octahedrons. On that day, our uh, the man who actually paid for this and some people from local government, they, they came to the construction area and we have finished these octahedrons and we have showed them the results of our work. And then we have decided to go and spend some time near the table. Actually, table is here. I'm showing my, by my mouse. So, so when we came here, and sit around the table, suddenly left from what we, we saw like a light flash, very bright light flash. And when all the people who have been on the field returned to that direction and we saw UFO appear and hovering over the octahedron, northern east octahedron. It was approximately two meters in diameter. And then it was hovering over this octahedron for maybe two minutes, no more. And then it made a jump like half of a second. And we saw this UFO hovering over the northwest octahedron. It was also hovering around two minutes and then became, it, 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 again, it made a jump toward the southwest octahedron. The speed of this jump was very, very high. So, and it was hovering for another two minutes. And then, oh, sorry. I, I, I so it's, uh, Oh, yeah, I'm showing the just pictures. And here, the, the fourth corner, it was in the forest. The UFO appeared here. And then in two minutes, it just disappeared. And we came to understanding, especially I, I, as long as I was um, investigating UFOs for more than 30 year, 33 years, I clearly understood that first of all, when we have completed, when we have finished this energetical system, our complex appeared on the, let's so-called cosmic star space map. So somebody saw our complex and UFO immediately appeared here. And when this object was hovering over all these four octahedrons, it made kind of a GPS mark so that in the future, those who is flying to the planet Earth, especially flying over this area of the planet Earth, they could navigate themselves and made a right jump in the right place without any deviations from norm about from, without any mistakes but also we have noticed another interesting effect that all that wants of horrors which it's it's a curious curious stuff that right after this flyby and energy impact actually on the pyramid complex the ones of Horus, which were undergoing a 12 day exposition in the pyramids, began to show very unusual properties. People who worked with them, with this ones of Horus for several months, began to enter into kind of a mental contact, mental communication with Akasha Chronic. And in some cases, like, for example, I myself, I have received a lot of information which later I have described in my books and 
on my websites. And especially this effect, unusual effect, I have experienced myself with the help of the Wands of Horus Bia. This is the instrument containing so-called natural uncombined iron. And I remember that once when I, re when I was thinking about the pyramid complex and uh, uh, I was thinking all my life about this technology which helped ancient Egyptian priests and pharaohs to communicate with the gods as it was told in ancient texts. I was thinking, and we were trying, we were testing different technologies just to get the same result. And once I remembered that there was a text, ancient Egyptian text, which have been talking about Bia, this natural uncombined iron. And this text show, also said that this material have been used to open the mouth of the gods. That's why I myself decided to use this material, this wands of Horus with this materials for as much time as it's possible during the day. I myself mostly uh, was sleeping with them. And approximately in six months, when I had a question in the evening and I was thinking about anything, like for example, Nibiru planet, I, I thought, I think you have heard about Nibiru planet. I remember that I was thinking, thinking, and next morning when I came down in my home and I sit, sat near the table down just to drink a coffee, I saw kind of a screen before my eyes and I saw exactly what happened with Nibiru planet and, the, and other very interesting and important facts and information which later I have described in my materials. So, and again, as you understand, I, I'm, I'm very quick. I'm just giving you brief, short information about uh, the, our interest, our interests, our projects I'm working with, with my friends. And again, I'd like to give you this telephone number with WhatsApp and Telegram, which you can use to, to learn more about the webinars. Also, you can visit my websites where you can find the information about it. And as long as we have um, a little bit more time, I can give you idea about uh, one interesting effect which took place in our pyramid. Here on this picture, you can see two, two men. The man on the right hand, he was the chief of the construction process. He was from the Moscow. And he had a very serious problem with his health, asthma. So serious uh, asthma that actually he used the, the most powerful spray, almost like each day, one time per hour, he was spraying just to have a possibility to, to breathe. And one day when we have been there in Tomsk, the chief, the boss, who was actually financing the pyramid, he called us in the evening and told, listen, friends, he said, I have got a very big seashell, which my friends brought me from India. This seashell has a whistling effect. So can we, let's go to the pyramid and try to, to make this sound in the pyramid. So, and we, we took a car, went to the pyramid and here on this picture, <clears throat> you can see the middle structure, which is inside of the 12th facet foundation. This red, like pyra eight sided pyramid, small chamber is covering the energetical source in the pyramid. So we enter this chamber, and we stood just opposite to each other. And then uh, 
we tried to make a sound of this shell and the first atom, the first sound was very weak, like almost strange and nothing. But then we have got a good result. The, the shell made a very, very loud, you know, very good tone. And suddenly this man fall down on his knees. He was covered with sweat and his eyes was like, you know, he was, he was scared of something. And then something strange had happened. He stood on his legs and ran away very, very, very fast. Interesting this, that after that case, he never ever used spray and his asthma was over. He said that when he was to Moscow, sometimes he, when he was nervous or stressed, he said, sometime I was just trying to get my spray and to use it, but then he said, why? I don't need it anymore. And for us, it was a very, very important case, just which gave us understanding that pyramid has a very, very special effect on the human health and the, on the human body. And also I'd like to, to share with you very important information uh, for me and actually for humanity that at the end of last year, I was lucky to formulate and to describe the mechanism of the pyramid on the human organism and energetical structure. Interesting is that this is the first time in our history when it was possible to describe the mechanism of the pyramid using scientific approach and esoteric approach. <laughs> Important is that if you just use scientific approach, it, it's impossible to describe the mechanism using the same ideas, the same principles, the same approaches, which actually our present science is using. If you take separately esoteric approach, it's also not enough to describe the mechanism, but when you put them all together, it works, it really works. And now I can tell you, and this is just a first sentence of the material of the article, which I started to write and actually wrote about it, about this mechanism, where I explain that this knowledge about this mechanism, when it, when it comes to any civilization of our universe or our galaxy, this knowledge will stimulate immediately a very fast jump like uh, stimul it has a very stimulating effect on humanity and using this knowledge our civilization can be changed within the following 25 30 years no more even maybe even less that's why this pyramid have been built and here you can see the internal part of the pyramid we where we were and we actually are making our experiments medical experiments, physical experiments, and the other ones. And well, as long as we have a very, very short time, I think I should stop here because then if I will start another topic, then it's gonna be another hour just to, to bring you to so, so interesting, so rich knowledge and just at the end of my presentation, which have been maybe short one and not so informative, 
I can honestly tell you that I can tell you now that we just came in Russia to understanding how pyramid actually is working. And up till today, this information have been, have been covered. And we are very, very happy in Russia that we can share with you this knowledge. We can share idea how the pyramid is working. And I'm sure that if people start using it, we can change our world. But first of all, we can change ourselves because with the help of the pyramid, we can change our endocrine system. We can, we can uh, perfect our immune system. We can perfect our nervous system. And with the help of it, we can get into contact with extraterrestrial civilization. And from this moment, when we become a part of the ex actually universal community, our planet will become kind of a paradise. So thank you for, for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Valerie Ubarov. Thank you. Um, before I pass the microphone over to the co-chair, friends, I just wanted to say that I, well, I, I slipped up a couple of times. I'm sorry, because I was using your old bio. <laughs> I was mm. desperately trying to get hold of you to get the updates, but I couldn't, you being a busy man, Valerie. So I used the old one. So that's why I said you had 15 years of experience. You actually had 30 years of research experience in yeah. ufology. Wow, yeah. that is really amazing and uh you also i also made another slip up you said you built 30 pyramids yes i said more so um you actually built the 30 pyramids within the pyramid complex that you were building right is it within there or is it scattered in different areas in russia so it means uh first of all i have built a first so-called experimental pyramid mm -hmm. because uh, let's let's say truly that we have got a lot of books about the pyramids and pyramid effects in published in different countries. But the problem is that when authors are describing the effects of the pyramids, they do not know exactly how a pyramid is working, because all the pyramids in China in Egypt, anywhere, they are destroyed. And you cannot experience the real effect. You cannot have a real effect from the wooden pyramid, especially like, you know, the pyramids with the ribs with the four, you know, four tubes, forget about it. It doesn't work. Pyramid must be built using a very special materials, a very special, proportions and parameters tuned on the human body and many, many other aspects. And only then, when we have built this experimental pyramid and we made kind of experiments and we understood what is good and what is not good, we have decided to build a complex in Tomsk. Why Tomsk? Because this city has the biggest student student campus in Russia. There, is, there are almost 300,000 students in Tomsk. And those men who have invited me to this project, in 2011, he asked me, listen, Valerie, can we build, can we create something with the help of the pyramid that can influence the student creative abilities. And I was very happy and I was like shocked. I said, listen, I'm, I'm ready right away to start this project because your idea 
what you are investing in this project is more than good. So, and this is the reason why we have started to build this complex of 29 pyramids so that this complex could cover all Russia because under this complex on the depth of 300 meters, there is a huge lake, much bigger than Baikal Lake. And through this water, the energy vibration of the complex can be spread all over the Russia. And what is going on now in our Russia, in our country, I mean, these positive changes, they have started right after the complex have been built. Can, yeah, I, I can also give you a, inter, a very unusual uh, example. Actually, Tomsk situated, let's say, in the middle of Siberian um, uh, location where the temperature on October or no, November is approximately minus 40, minus 45. It's very cold. So when we built the pyramid on 2012, on October 19th, we had plus 19, not minus 20 or 30, we had plus 19. And also we have experienced very unusual climatic effects, very unusual, which made it clear that this complex has a very unusual beneficial effect on the location of the city. So this is the reason why we started this complex with main idea, just to influence people and to help to bring in our country, the generation of kids with new mentality, with new properties, new energy, something that will help them, will allow them to com communicate with extraterrestrial civilization using one and the same language, language of love. So this is the general idea. Wonderful, uh, Valerie. Valerie, are you in touch with uh, Jason Shulka? He wrote the Pyramid Code and uh, he had a, an entity who first built the pyramids uh, uh, amongst the pharaohs or the pharaoh himself in the ancient times in Egypt. And that got channeled through and uh, he wrote a book called the Pyramid Code with all the details, pyramidal mathematics and everything in there. Have you come across Jason? No, no. Oh, I wish no. to introduce you to him. Yeah, so <laughs> as you understood. He's one of our speakers here. Yes, yes, as you understood, we, uh, we started our way on a pure scientific basis. On one hand, for sure, we have learned, I have myself, I have read a lot of ancient texts. I have worked with many, many papyruses and the other sources of information. But the other stuff we did on the pure scientific basis. So we are, we are scientific people, <laughs> let's say. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> folks, I just wanted to tell you, uh, the audience, the viewers, that you need to type in Dr. Valerie's name on Google search and you will see his videos, his interviews for all these years that he's been doing research and he had been sharing his Facebook, I mean his uh, website as well. Every time we promote and announce a speaker speaking at our meeting, we give the code, uh, the uh, links as well. So just click on the name, their name in the website, in physics website, it will take you to their websites, okay? So I just want you to pay attention, let's search him and uh, you will see a YouTube video that he made in uh, 2014 by, uh, produced by Studio 12, where all the details were being described. As um, Valerie was saying, he did, doesn't have much time to go into details. He made his presentation short, but um, if you look for this YouTube video that he made on pyramid energy as the title, 
produced by Studio 12 in September 2014. You get all the details there, folks. Okay. He had about, I think, 18,000 views now. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, more. Yeah. That's very good. It's very popular. It's very fascinating. And just watch it today. It's, um, I recommend it highly. Right. I also wanted to ask you another question about. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you, you actually, I put down on the website to announce <laughs> you speaking. I mean, uh, Vans of Horrors, you did touch on that. I, yeah. Very, very so shortly. I just touched them very, very shortly. Short. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're interested in the Vans of Horrors information that I need, uh, mm -hmm. like a two, three hours, you know, presentation uh -huh. with the breaks. And then I can give you uh, very, very comprehensive information about the ones, or you can visit my website and found there a lot of information about the we ones. Will, we will call you back to speak at physique. If you have the time, we will be yes, so delighted. We'll have you. You've got so much to share, especially when we also, I've also come across uh, Carrie Cassidy is one of our speakers as well. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, Carrie Cassidy, Carrie, today. She interviewed you. No, no, she yeah. spoke uh, several times at physique. And then we got a strike from YouTube <laughs> because the name's been targeted. But anyway, um, she, you were interviewed by Project Camelot way yes. back in 2007 yes, about right. the Russian construction of yes, nine yes. large pyramids. At that time, it was nine. Now you'd built 30. Wow. Between St. Petersburg and Moscow, right? Mm -hmm. I was saying. And then you did an experimental research, new approaches to curing cancer. That's really yeah. fascinating. Next time we have you back, we want you to speak about that. And to employ the pyramids as a sort of centering device that will cure all kinds of human mm. Ill, Ill, uh, ills yeah. and diseases. Yeah. So we would like to follow up on this in your next talk, right? So, um, I mean, in the later interview, I guess, with Kerry as well, mm -hmm. you described your interactions with a humanoid alien in Siberian wilderness, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And uh, your discussion of Earth's history, multidimensional multi -dimensional worlds, our place in the cosmos, and more in October 2007, right? Mm -hmm. Way back then. So mm -hmm. you have been interacting with ETs, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Is that how you get this technology to build the... the build? Yes, wow. I told you that. Yeah, yeah, you did, you did. Like, it's very fascinating. Of course, today's day and age with the last couple of years with the pandemic stuff, you know, a lot of people got damaged and harmed. So we would love to learn more from you <laughs> about how, you know, people can, can reverse the damage and uh, yeah. get healthy again. Yeah. With the pyramid energy, yeah. right? Pyramid, pyramid has a wonderful effect. Yeah. A wonderful effect, I tell you. Yeah. I need time to explain. But each effect needs time to explain. But Sure, certainly. Well, people, you know what? People worth it to know about it. Of course, of course. We are all ears, as I say. We are so thrilled to have you here. Um, you know, we are known for getting some of the most brilliant minds on the planet to speak. We're so fortunate. We thank you for, you know, um, choosing to be with us. I know it's hard to get you because you're such a busy man, but uh, today we have you. I, oh, I also wanted to say that you got more time. I did promise you to give you more time. Um, we apologize for the technical hiccups at the beginning that was taking away some time from you. So you do have more time. And if I could pass the microphone over to our co-chair, Dr. Fresh Frazzle, we can start the Q&A from yeah. the rest on the floor, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you have about 20 minutes to 25, right? Before the next speaker speaks with the Q&A session to answer the questions. Over to you, Fres. Thank you very much, Crystal. Uh, Dr. Valerie, uh, congratulations on this project. My goodness, this is a, from just a quick interpretation of what you've got here, is basically a giant piezoelectric resonator. Yes, right. Frequency resonator, yes. my goodness. And each facet adds to the resonance and right. to the focusing of this energetic frequency yeah. And as long as you've done this so exactly, then you can tune each of those frequencies in harmony to that <laughs> center point. 
Nice to talk with the scientific brain. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a whole bunch of them here. We have two R and D teams here at Physic. Yeah, exploring free happy. energy. He's, he's, he's the man. Understood immediately. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, from from the crystals of the quartz clear down underneath, yeah. being compressed with the weight of the entire structure, to be then focused up through the center. Yes. And through the, the same material. Yes, that's right. With the facets into it. What was interesting, what I thought was absolute, which was some of the information that I've got uh, from some of the Russian scientists here the last couple of weeks, just, I was like, oh my goodness, what interesting things, was when you get to the outer quadrants mm -hmm. and you have those large pieces of, basically it's quartz again, mm -hmm. pointed, you're actually going to an intersect to that point, which yeah. goes in and then it sets it. It's that intersect that gets really interesting. And that's about as far as I've gotten on my understanding <laughs> of what yes. happens. Uh, this, is, this is the point of transition. Exactly. Yes. The, this is the place where we can transit from our dimension into another. Okay. This is, this is very special. You are, you are understanding very, very properly. This is, this is the reason why we did it like this. Okay. Exactly. Uh, the only thing that I have question about, which of uh, the structure, everything is like, oh, this is wonderful, 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 is the amount of iron rebar inside your structure, because iron has a tendency to uh, be affected <laughs> induction. Uh, this is this is one of the biggest mistakes of many, many researchers which are talking like this. First of all, <clears throat> uh, today I was not talking about the central knowledge which we have extracted, filtered out from ancient texts. This knowledge is about uh, synchronization. An ancient text says that if you want to bring your body, your health, your mentality into the perfect condition, you need to synchronize vibration of your energy structure of your aura with the aura of the planet earth the source of the energy source of this wonderful life energy which ancient egyptian priests called ra the the source is the core of the planet and the core of the planet is made of Iron. <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Yeah. This is the reason why, if it is iron, then we are using this effect. Like when we breathe, we can, how to say, uh, it's a kind of a resonance when you can, when the, when the energy from the core is brought on the rebar system inside of the pyramid. And at the same time, it's interesting that if you go inside of the pyramid, then there is zero level of any electromagnetic field from outside. Correct. Because inside, it's absolutely pure. Absolutely pure. So metallic rebar system, no problem at all. And, and also, it's, it's important to point out that... Uh, in Cheops pyramid, there was also found some metallic iron plates, and they were used there, yes, and they were used there for interplanetary and intergalactic communication system. Okay. Because the, the other thing that just come to mind as I was listening to you is when we take a look at the Grand Great Pyramid. Uh, if that is a conglomerate stone instead of, you know, basically uh, quartz and iron and some others, it's, it's a bunch of different things into it. It probably has the iron built into that outer core, similar to what you're doing. Then that would be a, the Faraday cage effect, uh, yeah. even on the Great Pyramid of Giza. You know, uh, they would for sure use metallic stuff as much as possible, but they had no the factories to produce enough metals and to use it. And also I'd like to 
explain to those who is interested that the location where the pyramid complex in Giza have been built energetically is very weak, very weak. This is the reason why they had to build a huge pyramid so that with their masses, they could affect the field, magnetical field, electromagnetic field, affect and create a, how to call combustion, effect of the combustion of the space for interplanetary communication. Also, uh, now you can look what is inside of the pyramid. There are many, many blocks, okay? And some of the blocks, most part of them, at the beginning, they, have, they had a very special parameters, very special, like a quartz crystal. If you want to create a, a filter, which is letting go through this filter, the energy within a very special range of vibration, you need to create a special quartz you know, element with a special parameter. So the big, big, this, how to say, block in the pyramid, they played exactly the same role. Uh, from, this, from this point of view, the Kelps pyramid is just only started to open its secrets. Wow. Uh, one of the things we've noticed when we take a look at the different pyramids located around the planet, some of them are very small, but then as we go north towards your country, they get larger and yours that you're building is getting into some of the largest pyramids on the planet now. Actually, yes, in Russia, we have found pyramid which is cut off um, a mountain, cut off out of a mountain, almost one kilometer high. Wow, wow. Uh, I've got one last question, then I'll turn it over to the people that are reading the questions in the uh, chat. Uh, when we take a look at healing, when we put people into this space around or in the pyramid, in the are, pyramid. We, are we able to regress the type of cells? Meaning that we start with complex cells, does it revert back to like maybe a T cell? and then grow back to fix the parts that uh, need regeneration, or do you know? Um, we, <laughs> let's well, say we have solved this problem. We have solved, we, we, we have found an answer. And <laughs> yeah, we need some time to explain, but I'll try to explain it shortly for you, shortly. Mm -hmm. So um, the Kelps pyramid, for example, has a very, very special parameters. The Kelps pyramid has two names, two ancient names. First name, it's called fifth section of Duat. And then the other name, uh, I'll try to explain what it means. The, the place where soul is pulling through. Understood? That's the other way, other interpretation of-, of It's a duat. name. Yeah, no, yeah. Do what? Do what? Do what means it has exact translation into English language, exact. Duat is aura, 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 okay. aura. aura. Okay. It's okay. exact aura. This is aura. Duat around the human body, aura around the star, around the earth. Actually, this aura. But at the same time, it's interesting that pyramid. Now listen very attentively, very very attentively, pyramid must be constructed so that in, when you go inside of the pyramid and you 
take a special place like in the like inside of the sarcophagus your fifth energetical body fifth is getting out of your body it go, it gets out it's it's critically important for for the person who is inside of the sarcophagus it will be like a, he he will see himself hovering over the sarcophagus but the same effect people has when they are traveling with the help of so-called second body astral body it's the same effect but astral second energetical body is wrong it's the biggest mistake this is the problem of all problems of our civilization it should be it must be fifth energetical body and now most important thing when your fifth energetical body return back to your physical body it switches on your genetic programs and only then a very serious critical hormonal changes energetical changes will start in your body okay and this is the key moment that's this exactly what people didn't understand actually this is the knowledge have been this knowledge have been lost thousands of years ago somebody mm -hmm. helped people to lose this knowledge but idea is to extract fifth body and then return it back and if you do it you will okay. be changed within the following one two years your body will be changed you will become younger like 30 years younger your skin everything will be changed everything you will be like you know <laughs> and oh. this is exactly what ancient texts are talking about but they are interpreted a wrong way ah okay right uh, this Crystal, is why it back gets to you. so exciting <laughs> yeah i was going to interject you said the fifth energetical body do you mean the chakra to well the the fifth one is which yes. is the solar plexus from yes. the navel solar plexus it is yeah. the third one third yeah. one the solar Fourth plexus one. no Fourth. one two three no four, no, no, no 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 it's four. the other way first one it's from the from, from the, the bottom uh, yeah doesn't mm -hmm. matter so this is this is your fifth chakra yes oh that's the yeah. fifth chakra yeah. yeah okay right the throat chakra yeah throat chakra and that's the fifth energetical body this is why it gets so exciting that's why we need to have you back to explain to our people here because you were talking about employing the pyramids as a sort of centering device during the next few years. So we move closer to the galactic plane. So you're saying that we are transitioning, we're turning to the, the silicon base from carbon based to silicon base into the higher uh, vibrational frequency beings that we're supposed to be. It's, uh, you know, it's not like this. It's a little bit different understanding, <laughs> but for, to answer this question, I need much time. Sure. <laughs> I cannot do it right away. I cannot. It, we need time for this. Yeah. We will fix another appointment for the next okay. meeting or something like that. Okay. Right? okay. Yeah. Back to you, Fres. Uh, any more questions from the floor, Kulche? Oh, let's see what we've got. We've got Wildo, Wildo has got something to say. He says the channel canal in which the energy from the earth does go through a lens to magnify and focus the energy is a question mark behind in chat. I... Can you see the chat? I can Henry? see the chat. And I, was, I think that's what uh, Dr. Val and I were talking about when we started about the focusing of it. And he said it goes from the core of the planet uh -huh. and up through and is focused and then actually it runs through um filters yeah. of quartz yeah. so you're you're basically isolating the 
aberrant vibrations or frequencies mm -hmm. and getting with the one that is resonating inside the structure. So they can make measurements probably of the entire pyramid and it'll have a base resonance for the entire structure. Yes. And then there'll be octaves because of the way it's constructed that there is just like on a guitar or yeah, other yeah, yeah. musical instrument, as exactly. you go up, you're going to have different frequencies that will be at those levels. Next, next time, I'll tell you how we have got into contact with extraterrestrial civilization inside of the Cheops pyramid. Yeah, that is so cool. That is so good. <laughs> All right, I think to have the continuity, right? Yeah. Can we can we have you back to speak in our next meeting, which is on the first of June? Would you let's, be free? Uh, let's try. Let's try. Okay, first of yeah. June, folks. If mm. you want to listen to Valerie about contacts with the ETs, extraterrestrial, and more of the pyramidal signs that he's very much into, that will help with cancer and human ills and all that. Hey, come back, mm. folks, for the mm. next meeting on the first of June. Yeah, Valerie yes, will I be would... speaking again. Yes, I would say that uh, the group that we've gone very scientific on this one and to come back with the ET topic would really thrill our yeah. listeners. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. I'm gonna thank you and I'm gonna back out. Uh, Pontus yeah. and uh, Crystal, yeah. the show's Pontus, yours. Yep. Thank you. Pontus, do you have anything that you wanna ask that like uh, pyramid mathematics that we've been studying from Thomas was like? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. uh, I, I need to go back to them and uh, come back next uh, meeting. Next meeting, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got plenty to ask you, Valerie. <laughs> because next time. Been, yeah, we've been yeah. dabbling with the science as well. And I would like to introduce you to Jason Schulker. I think that will help uh, bridge the gaps that you all have in the uh, solving the equation. <laughs> So, um, anybody from the floor who wants to unmute yourself to ask uh, Valerie some questions before we close this first session? We still have about eight minutes. Books? Um, Natalia? It, it... Uh, Valerie, uh, if you uh, check the chat, uh, there's a message in uh, Russia. In uh, Russian, yeah. In Russian. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, <laughs> Natalia. Know. Yes, yes, Natalia. Да, свои люди. Great. <laughs> Интересно, откуда Наташ? Откуда напиши? Из какого города? You can unmute yourself, Natalia. Yes. Yeah. yeah. From yeah. which city she is? Interesting. From which city? Hello. Oh yes. Hello. Привет. <laughs> I'm from Sweden. I'm uh, close to Pontus and uh, the friend to Pontus. Mm, great, great, great. <laughs> nice but to... I'm, I'm from Ukraine, uh, Donetsk, but I moved to Sweden in uh, 1991. Mm. Oh, oh so good you job. You're living you there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in the page, uh, mm. Russian Sweden. Great, nice to, nice to meet you here. Yes, very interesting. Thanks so much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can have Maria. Maria, can you, Maria Lange, can you unmute yourself? You said you have been to the Russian pyramid that uh, Valerie has built. A friend of her. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, good evening. No, a friend of mine has been there in Tomsk uh, visiting the pyramids. I'm sorry, it was not my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and you said your friend was not allowed to speak about the pyramid. Wow. Yes, yes, he was uh, very quiet about this. Why, Valerie, did you tell people who visited the no. pyramids not no. to say no, anything? No, 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 no. <laughs> we, are, we are all very open, said, if you want, tell, but tell truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I don't mean to be cheeky, but oh, this is strange that he won't speak about it. Yeah. Yes, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe oh. it was his personal idea. Yeah. Probably. His personal wish. 
because we are we are very open for communication and information about the pyramid complex in Russia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you okay. Okay, thank you for your invitation and hope to see you next time on the first and June. Oh, thank you very much, Valerie. It's Thanks so, so much. exciting to have you back to speak to us again so we can learn a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> We're so looking forward. Yes. Thank so, you again. Bye bye then. Bye. Yeah. So, bye. Uh, there being no other business, this first session of the Physic 100th meeting is now adjourned to the second meeting. Thank you, folks. Stay put because we have Petty Brasat coming on. Thank you.